What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler, a true banger of a video. Hope you guys enjoy this one, drop a like if you do, and also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and go ahead and check out the Goblin merch site in the description below. It's linked at the very top, just click that link, even if you have no intent of purchasing, just check it and out, helps me out a lot. We got very affordable hoodies, t-shirts, we got mugs, phone cases, all all your summer accessories are in the Goblin merch shop. Listen, the best crackhead merch in town. A great way to make friends? Spot someone else who's wearing Goblin merch. You know that guy will probably smoke crack with you. You just made a new friend. Either way, hope you guys enjoy this video. Quick little story here. Let's dive right into it. So... This happened fairly recently, which might surprise some of you guys because I, I, you know, don't really steal many things anymore. But this happened during my Coke Chronicles phase, during the summer of 2019. So it might be starting to make a little more sense why I was stealing, right? I woke up on this particular day and I was fresh out of blow and I was also broke. I had maybe a gram of weed left on me, so at best I could sell that for 15 bucks if I was lucky and found an idiot. And then even then, I can't buy any coke with that, so I'm shit out of luck. And for those of you guys who might be new around here, maybe you're not familiar, during the summer of 2019, I was a raging cocaine addict. I'm talking terrible. I have a whole series on my channel called The Cocaine Chronicles. If you guys want to hear about that summer, just go watch that series. But I was just an absolute animal for the snow at this point, right? I would do anything for some blow, dude. Absolutely anything. So I wake up this day after staying up late very, you know, the, the night before, getting very geeked, and I was out, and I was fiending the moment I woke up. You know, it was typically my ritual this summer. I'd wake up, I'd do some blow, and I'd go over to one of my friend's houses, and I'd do more blow all day long, maybe for two days, one time for three days. That was bad, but either way, so... I, I'm trying to scheme on how to make some money. You know, I'm I'm trying to think of any way possible to make some money. Uh, I'm trying to think of maybe stores I could steal from, maybe if there's anything that I own that I could sell, or I'm just thinking of any which way to make some money, dude. I needed to buy some blow. I was fiending so goddamn hard. Now, the complicated part with this was I'm over 18 now, right? At this point, I, I was over 18. Most of the time when I did, you know, all my stealing to make money, it's when I was under 18. So the punishments were very different. You didn't really get in much trouble at all. Maybe you got a fine. Maybe most of the time they just let you go if you were under 18. But once you're over 18, they view you as a scumbag and you will go to jail. They don't care, right? They don't give a damn at all. Sometimes they'll just tell you to leave, but I was going for the gold this time. I was going for a good amount of money. So I'm, hey... I was not going to be told to leave. They were going to call the cops for sure. But either way, so I, I take the little bit of weed that I had left and I roll up a blunt and I go out to the garage and I'm standing out there smoking, you know, and it was the first smoke of the day. So I got nice and baked, you know, I didn't smoke a ton of weed at this point because I was more focused on blow. But, you know, the, the rare occasion where I wasn't geeked, it was nice to smoke because I got extra high because I didn't smoke as much at this point. So I was baked. I was feeling good. And I'm sitting there trying to formulate any plan possible to get some blow. I'm thinking in my head and I'm like, all right, I'm banned from Walmart. I'm banned from the majority of the local grocery stores. I'm banned from Walgreens. So if I get caught stealing in any of those places, I get charged with trespassing too. Then I'm really getting booked, you know, so I can't go there. So I'm thinking in my head of places to steal from. And Best Buy comes to mind. Now listen. Best Buy is terrible to steal from. It, it is abs It's rigged, okay? The system is rigged at Best Buy. You guys know, everyone's been to Best Buy. They got security at the door. They don't play around, dude. The tech store happens to have good technology to locate people who are stealing. So, I'm a little concerned. But, uh, you know, as I'm looking around at more stores, I was literally on Google Maps, just looking around around me, trying to think of anywhere to steal from. And the only other option was Target, which, for those of you guys who don't steal stuff, or maybe you don't know, Target is a death trap. Do not steal from Target. They don't play. It is common knowledge. Target is absolutely the worst store to steal from. Like, yeah, they have some good stuff. Will you get away? Maybe one time, but Target is not a good or easy lick. Their asset protection is next level, dude. They, they go crazy with it. So... Walmart was usually my, my go-to, but I'm banned now. I can't go there. So Best Buy was what I settled my sights on. 
And I'm trying to think of, you know, how I used to do it back in high school. I'm trying to plan this out now that I'm nice and baked. And I realize, like, I'm going to have to steal video games. There's not much other stuff you can really get out of Best Buy that doesn't have an alarm on it. But they always have that section of cheaper games that aren't in those plastic cases that they have, you know? Best Buy, they have those super hard plastic cases that have the alarms. And obviously, you can't get out with them. But the ones that don't have the cases are great. So next, I'm trying to figure out what to wear to the store. You know, I'm like, okay, like, how am I carrying this out? Obviously, I can't fit, like, five or six video games in my pockets. How I used to do it in high school was I'd wear my winter jacket in and I'd just go hit licks. But normally, that would be during a time when it was cold out and I could kind of get away with it. But this was during the summer. This was, like, August. This was towards the end of my Coke binge when I was not— I didn't have much money left, and I was still fiending every day. So I was getting desperate at this point in my life, right? So I I wanted to do the winter coat plan, but the problem is it's the middle of fucking August, boys. If I walk into this Best Buy looking absolutely just just awful, just looking damaged, okay? I, I'm running on maybe four hours of sleep, okay? I'm not lo- I'd just been doing blow all night the night before. My nose was still red. I felt like I was going to get spotted instantaneously. But at the same time, the longer I thought about it, the more I realized, like, it, I didn't really think I had a choice. I'm, th- I'm sitting there and I'm thinking in my head and I'm like, bro, like, I don't really have anything to sell that I'm able, you know, that I'm willing to sell. Like, All I have is, like, computer stuff, really, at this point. You know, I'm not selling my PC. Fuck that. I use that every day. I need need that to make videos, you know? And all the video games I could possibly sell were long gone because I was three months into a Coke binge. Those those were gone in week one, dude. We're on week 12 here. Way deeper into this. So, I get my winter jacket. I get my pair of pants on. And I dress like we're in the middle, mid-November. Maybe even early December, you could argue, right? I do not look like I belong anywhere I go. But I throw on this jacket. I throw on a t-shirt under it. And this jacket, it was nice. I remember it was a Tommy Hilfiger jacket. And it had these huge pockets on the inside. I'm talking so big that I'd literally taken a Hennessy bottle from Walgreens and put the whole thing inside of this pocket and just left with it. Giant. I could fit a million video games in this pocket. So I throw on this outfit, and I'm sweating the moment I leave the house, dude. It's hot out. There, It's not raining. It's not even cloudy. There is zero valid excuse for me, to wearing, for me to be wearing this winter jacket. But I don't give a damn. I hop in my car, and I drive over to Best Buy. And I'm starting to come down from my high, and I'm still fiending. And now I'm fiending even harder because I'm not stoned anymore. So I'm getting desperate. I power walk my ass through this parking lot into this Best Buy. And now, hey, it's time to shine, boys. It's time to flex my knowledge, okay? Best Buy's a tough lick. So I walk in. The security guy says hey to me. I'm like, oh, how you doing? And immediately I notice that it's fucking, it's pretty packed in this Best Buy, dude. It's pretty lit. Which can be a good and a bad thing. It can be good because obviously you're blending in with the crowd. So asset protection, hopefully they might, they might not notice you as quickly on the cameras. But also, it's bad because obviously people see what you're doing. You have to kind of be a little more sketchy about what you're doing. It's nice when there's not many people in the stores. You can just take that shit, slide it in your coat. Be quick enough about it. Hopefully no one saw. But when there's a lot of people in the store, you got to take it and you got to go somewhere that's kind of secluded. But then if you're taking some games and going over to a secluded area like the fucking home appliance section, they're going to know something's up because I'm too young to own a home. Why would I be looking at stoves? So I, I had to be very careful here, you know? So I walk on over to the game section. And I'm looking at the clearance game section. It, it's looking a little light. I'm sitting there, and I'm trying my hardest to to figure out, you know, like, which games to grab. And I remember, I busted out my phone, and I ended up going on the GameStop trade-in site, right? And just looking at the values for everything. It turned out the most valuable shit that they had was the Call of Duty games. They had, like, a year or two, I think it was, like, BO3 or some shit? I don't know. But all the Call of Duties hold up their trade value pretty well. The exception of Infinite Warfare and, like, COD Go site. No, Advanced Warfare is worth, like, 10 cents. But all the Black Ops games hold their trade values pretty well because of zombies, right? So I saw they had, like, a bunch of copies of BO3 out, and I'm like, dude, say less. It's so over, bro. They, they're absolutely, they're fucked. They're fucked, right? So they, they had a bunch. I'm talking, I, my plan was I was going to get four copies of Call of Duty, and I was going to try to grab, like, a few other games. You know, I was going to try to just grab a few other clearance games and just see what I could get. So I, had, I grabbed one copy of Call of Duty. I look down, I, I grab a couple copies of some other games. I've got, like, three games in my hand at this point. 
And then, because I, I was trying to think in my head, and I was trying to be rational about this, and I was like, well, if I grab four copies of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I think anyone on any camera is going to notice that that's kind of weird, you know? I, I was really overthinking this whole thing, when in reality, I probably should have just went in, grabbed the games, put them in my jacket, and left, right? So I grabbed these other copies of COD, now I've got all the games. I'm looking around me, and there's a couple other people kind of nearby, and I don't want to be sketchy, and I knew it was going to take me a second to get these in my coat. So I walk away from the area, and I kind of act like I'm looking around at other stuff. And I go in this back corner that's kind of past the TVs, and they've got a bunch of other, like, electronics. They've got printers and speakers, and it's, a, you know, all the shelves are stacked high as hell, boys. I'm talking this is perfect to hit a lick. So I'm down as a clown, dude. I bust open my jacket. It was already unzipped, and I put four games in one pocket, four games in the other. I'm loaded up. And this jacket was super puffy, dude. Like, you couldn't really tell if anything was in the pockets or not, because it was an extremely puffy jacket. So now I've got the games in my pocket, and I'm, I'm trying to get out of here, dude. I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, do I just walk out past the security guy? Like, if he tries to reach for me, there's no way I'm outrunning this guy. He's jacked as hell. I don't know what it is about the Best Buy security guys, but dude, I, like, I, I don't know, what is their, like, do they train them? Do they hire, like, like ex-militia men or some shit? Dude, they're huge, bro. They look like they could be mercenaries. They're actually crazy. So, I'm sitting there, and I, I got my eyes on the door at this point. I walk a little closer to the front, and security man's still standing there, you know? I'm kind of trying to blend in, make it look like I'm looking at stuff, while also maintaining my sight, you know, my, uh, my eyesight on the door. So, I got my eyes on the door, and security man, you know, I notice he's talking with some employees a lot. He's chatting around, kind of dicking around, not really giving a fuck. And eventually, some lady walks over from the cash register. One of the uh, one of his like coworkers, one of the cashiers or some shit. I don't know what the hell she did, but an employee comes over, and she's talking to him for a little bit. And eventually, he like walks off with her a little bit, not very far away, still maybe five feet, ten feet within the door, but far enough where I could get past him. He wasn't looking at the door at this point, so I knew that this was the only opportunity I had. Like, it was now or never. I've got these games in my jacket, and I just speed walk. I book it out those fucking doors. And luckily, you know, I took all the clearance games, of course, so they had none of the cases, so no alarms went off or anything. I booked it out the door. My heart was racing, boys. The sweat was forming on my forehead. But I got the fuck out, and I got to my car, and I was sitting there, and I was like, holy fuck, dude. I had to dip immediately. I start my car. I fucking leave, dude. I'm out of there. I take my coat off, and I unload the games, and I start taking them all out of the plastic wrap to go trade them in. Because, hey, I don't think they're going to take four copies of BO3 if I go trade them in with the plastic wrap on. So I, I kind of overthink this a little bit, and I'm like, well, you know, I, I probably can't trade in all these games at once so they'll know something's up. So I traded in two of the COD copies at GameStop, along with all the other miscellaneous games I got. And then the last two copies of COD that I had left, I went and traded them in at a different store. That actually ended up giving me a little more money than GameStop. I think it was called, like, Disc Replay, I'm pretty sure. I used to go there all the time as a kid, dude. They were fire. Most of them closed, though, during COVID. It's kind of sad, bro. They had, they had everything, dude. You get NES games. Oh, you could get anything up in that shit. Either way, big ups Disc Replay. But back on topic here. So, I went and sold my other games at Disc Replay, which, looking back, I probably should have sold all the games there because they give more money. And I was set, boys. Ended up making, I think I got, like, 80 bucks out of it, 70 or 80 bucks. But it was enough for me to get a little bit of blow. I wasn't getting the best, you know, the best packed fat bag ever. I had to, you know, negotiate with the plug a little bit. But being three months into the Coke binge, I was a daily customer for this guy. So he was flexible with me. So I hit him up and I tell him, I'm like, my man, I need a gram... Right fucking now, boys. Pronto. I literally, I slammed my desk so hard there, it turned my mic off. So I had to, I had to start recording again here. But I, hey, sorry about the little interruption there. <laughs> but either way, I needed that shit pronto. He comes through almost instantaneously. Like 30 minutes later, I, I'm with the Coke plug. And I'm feeling like I'm on top. I'm on cloud nine, boys. I'm on top of the world. I get my gram and I go back home and I sat by my computer all day like a hobgoblin doing blow. I only had a gram left, so I wasn't trying to link up with nobody, dude. I was a full-on addict at this point. I was fiending. No one was getting a slice of my pie, dude. So I sat at home all day just getting geeked off my rocker, boys. The ultimate best buy lick during the Coke Chronicles phase. Hey, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the merch site linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, boys.